Radio, RJ, CNC Metalworks. We're on a road trip today. Anybody in the car stuff or watches car stuff knows that some of the funner times are just going after one. And that's what we're doing. We're not going just after anyone. We're going after a real special one. Well, here it is. What we're going after. 39 Chevy. This is mom. Say hey, mom. Hi. <laughs> and that's it, front to back. There's a bunch of bottles of stuff. Well, yeah, there's parts. Yeah. yeah. Carburetor parts, it looks like. Yeah, it's that carburetor. There's a socket in there. Mm -hmm. And carburetor. Yeah, one thing, we'll deal with a flat tire. Hopefully get it rolling. I managed to get it open. He had an electric solenoid operation that took a little while to figure out. I had to kind of think like he did. He's got a, a hidden switch in the tail end that trips the power on and off the solenoids. And if you look right here in this little scupper, you'll see that little switch right there. He's got tucked up in there. And that's, of course, where you just... Use your hand when you come up on it out of the grocery store and, and you know gain access to your suicide door car anyway we threw the charger on it underneath because we couldn't find anything else because he's got battery cables from the motor all, all the way to the back which ends up being yeah there's that dead battery and there's no trunk lid on this car so with all that said Cool cut down 55 Chevy Dash. Tilt wheel. A lot, of, a lot of neat old school tricks we're going to keep. Really interesting. You talk about a shoehorn. Yep. It's a Pontiac 400, and there isn't a half inch to spare anywhere. He got her in there. He made it work. We're going to try and put this back the way he wanted, what his ideas were. I've got a sketch and drawing somewhere. I'll reveal to y'all a little bit later. Now we gotta get this beast loaded up. Now we finally got inside of it for a little bit of help and luck. Hopefully one tire is all we'll need and a little drag and push, get her on the trailer. There she is, we're loaded. The idea behind this here at the shop um, is we're hoping to do something closer to what he wanted. Uh, he was a true, um, well, I guess people call me old school. This guy was the school. <laughs> he uh, he believed in building everything out of, out of how they did when they were kids in high school. And that was just straight salvage. Um, this car started out as a 39 Chevy Coupe. And it was actually out of the scrap pile in my old shop um, for another project. And it was just a leftover body. Whole bottom end was gone. And, you know, Pop, he would ask if he could have this or have that. And we let him take parts home. But pretty much most of the car came out of the old custom shop we ran for years. And it's just, just this and that. And then the rest of it was some salvage yard stuff. I mean, he did everything... I guess nowadays they call it traditional, but he did everything like we used to do way back when people didn't know what custom even really was, but it's just parts. Um, it's got a 70 Nova Chevy clip, dog leg into the front for independent suspension, and some brakes and power steering, little Nova clip uh, 
is uh, springs and rear end kind of deal. Nothing real special. You just like to make them cruise and go. Um, the parts are the parts list don't never stop. He uh, he made the the little lakes pipe opening just out of a piece of aluminum tubing that my brother gave him, and uh, that is an old drive shaft. Actually, pieces of an old drive shaft he cut down, and y'all get the the idea of the continued fadeaway fenders here. He just made all that out of parts and pieces. And this guy would get his metal off washing machines and refrigerator doors and anything he could find. So metal just came from everywhere. And uh, a lot of this venting, though, some of it he actually didn't like. For instance, like the scoop, but the louvers, this. Uh, this little side piece here um, with the refrigerator door handle. Um, this, we used to call it a barbecue grill. <laughs> um, it was mostly just to get rid of heat. Uh, even even the whole reasoning behind running the uh, 53, the 53 Buick grill was again, he uh, originally just did the front of it and it got its name, the blade, and it just, he could not get this motor to cool off. It was so closed in and so much motor, it just, he couldn't get rid of the air. And, and you know, back then we got, we got things we're gonna do to try and help it out now, like hopefully a radiator and cooling fans and things that are a little bit more of an upgrade. And uh, maybe we can get lucky enough to, to uh, delete some of the things that he didn't want, but I, I'm gonna try and really hard to keep some of the stuff that he did want. And uh, you got your 40 headlights that came off a chop top sedan we were doing. The guy didn't, he wanted a whole different headlight treatment, so Pop took those home. Um, up here, we got probably one of the hardest chops. <laughs> Real Bonneville, kind of dry lakes looking deal. He really wanted, he really wanted that mean, low, low, chopped, hard chop look. I mean, his nickname was Chop. All his friends called him Chop. This is one of the reasons why. And quite a few others he did. But Mom, the story is, she wouldn't ride in it unless she had, and I quote, a way out. And Pop put this in the roof. He didn't really want it, but he would call it the escape hatch. And that seemed to work. She would ride in it. Going down here course hand fabricated skirts and uh, he continued that that split window treatment just just making stuff and back then everybody almost everybody in the 80s 90s would run a third brake light of some kind gotta have a Chevy bow tie <laughs> a little fade away in the roof really not sure about that piece either I do like some of the line work you did I think some of the little things like the molded in rain gutters and uh, there's quite a bit quite a bit of the, the little things that I really think is cool that we'll keep scallop on the doors oh. <clears throat> just the way they open everything's so cool um, this we had three 49 Cadillacs that we were doing at the old shop and <laughs> He got so comfortable, he would just come up there and get pieces. He ended up actually grabbing the good bumper and, of course, the tail end off one of the parts cars. But there again, he put it to good use, so I figured it's okay. He made it work. And we got fade away, little hidden thing. One of the things that used to bother me the most, he always thought tags were ugly. He hated them, so he would tend to... Do something that gave it some sort of purpose at least to look at if you have to look at it let's well look at something around it the dash was uh, a couple of 55 Chevys I had and he even said at the time he did it he said I know this has been done a lot but I really it's just it was always his favorite dash I think he has two or three in different projects but I gave him this it just didn't have all its parts you can see certain things are missing like the glove box door. I'm gonna look around, but looks like we might have to scrounge up a few parts for this. And uh, you remember 55 used to have the wrap around the door on. Everybody would 
put them down the middle and make it work. And yeah, he didn't like that. He's just like, well, I'll just, I'll just push the door up against the flush of it, and just knock it off. He liked the dash itself. He said it always reminded him of like early Corvettes and that kind of thing. And of course, you got to have your in-the-face drag tack, <laughs> like. Like there's enough room to look out, but we're gonna put a big old mirror right in the middle on a drag tag. He uh he was something else. Driving these things was something else. And you couldn't see a guy's whole face in, in these windows. And of course, his escape hatch seems to allow quite a bit of light in here. I do have that. A lot of neat little things. He's got a pull cable there for his hood and Look at that interesting place for your high beam, low beam switch on the floor. We'll just stick that on the dash. <laughs> and little made pieces. Uh, obviously with the word lock, I'm sure it has something to do with shutting the doors in. Probably suicide pins if I had to guess. I know those are the controls for the latches, but I imagine behind them kicks somewhere and yep there it is there's a little pin sneaking through there I'm pretty sure that was probably some sort of safety deal for going down the road for suicide doors he just closed himself in maybe that's why I need the escape hatch <laughs> if that failed you were stuck in this thing like a sardine in a can see some of the wiring Everything's just done by hand. Old fuse, fuses jumped out one at a time back there. That's kind of cool. Gauges were almost anything he could find or come across. And honestly, these all being Sun Pro and him matching that out, that's kind of cool. Old Stuart Warner Speedo, something you don't see too often. Rather large indicator blue lights, one's missing. kind of how it looks. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> I even tell the story behind the motor and everything. Where are these seats at? We found a wiring diagram and we found some sort of cap that goes on so that's him and his wife. Save that and give it back to his wife. Well, so it's mostly everything out of the uh, major cab. Now you get the battery out. Or 11 Maybe that's what that tool was for. 
There. There's no way. What is it? Big or too small? Five eighths or eleven sixteenths. This is five. There's just not enough wrench there, bro. Yeah, I don't know what it's for. Trying to figure it out. <laughs> I think there's more cool on the other end of it. Is there any adapters or anything? Adapters for what? There's all types of those bags. Fuel adapters. That's cool. But let's get that stack. Let's go ahead and show that. Now that you got it figured out. Hey, what is this for? That's wrap? No, that's car. Oh, God. Now we got more pieces. Well, that's just it though. It doesn't all go together. Why? Okay, so this was the initial. You sure this thing go on first? Well, that's the fun part about all this. Okay, so let's try this. Because this is the piece we didn't mess with. There's no, 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 no. So that definitely goes first. Okay. How about this? Flip it over. Yeah, let's just think about it. Okay. Oh, we're getting somewhere. Ooh. What, dude? What was under <laughs> car? I think that goes underneath. So then this fit. Well, this is there. Yeah, he had two of them. So this fit. Oh, this was an induction, not a drip tray. Oh, it sure was. And that fit. That's why he has the foam. That's why the foam's there. And then the. Not that. No, no, no. Okay, now it's looking odd again. Okay, this gonna go. That's that's another car. Okay. Why does it fit? You had it right first. I put that on. Huh? So this goes here. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, this had to. No, he was using it for air, but it goes how you had it. Because this has to go on top. Yeah, you're right. Put it down. You're right. That's crazy. And then, because you can see where it's been. You, you made know, it so man, you're, mechanic, you're mechanic and I love it. I love it. And, and then, then that, covered that, the, that, that covered the distributor. And then the pump. So that's his and forced could, air induction. It that could. was his system. That's his forced air induction. And it sucked on that plate. Yeah, because this is going to work. That's crazy. This is so cool. <laughs> you don't get more MacGyver right. homemade than that. Can you see that? Look at that. Look at that seal. And you know that foam probably come out of an old vacuum cleaner or something. Yeah, there yeah, it that's is. That's how it works. That's a uh, look and, and peeky boo. Peek it's going. got a little peeky boo. Can it shut? No, it's shut. No, there's something different, and that's going to be the carburetor itself because he had that summit carb on there. Ain't that crazy? Maybe, maybe the stack wasn't on there. Maybe. Let's try that. Because that could be for the, the other, like, that goes, in other words, that goes with that. It's just held it's all, you got to force it all down. Let me put that on. See what that See, I was just going by, it had so much spike sticking out. Oh, yeah, I know a lot of them do, though. Yeah, that makes more sense. sense to me. Yeah, see, that spike ain't right. Oh, they say it is the wrong carb. But that's how it would that's go. That's the 35 carb. Oh, for the other the coop. He took that's what it is. He took he took the carb off of this, and he's having problems in the black and the rich. Yeah. This is the wrong carb. That explains why this tall breather. That means the other car is missing carb too. Levi and I have been uh, putting this little YouTube channel thing together for a while. Uh, not not very long though. No, I think they're on six videos maybe. Anyway, he uh, he kind of made me realize that hey, we need a little bit more. We just wanted to show some custom stuff, have a little fun with this thing, and 
just the cool part about being able to look back and, and see some of the work, especially on our own rides, like the Barracuda projects. That, that's that's my boy's ride. Levi's uh, pride and joy. We're having a lot of fun with that thing. Camaro, another muscle car, a lot of rad stuff being done to it. It's kind of a upper end car, more of a show kind of thing. But uh, we were looking for like a third thing to do, uh, just something to kind of keep you know more content out there. And we do a lot of custom work here at the shop, and uh, it's all fun and a great time. And it kind of. It, it kind of was one of the things where, you know, hey, we'll add something. We've got the little rat rod project. We've got a couple old truck projects. Uh, a lot of little little things that we could, you know, pretty much do anything on. But as far as something that, that's just uh, maybe would pique everybody's interest to a point or some other people wanting to look at some of this stuff, um, even for ourselves, I got to thinking about it and messing around. But um, and then it kind of kind of hit me um i lost my father uh about two years ago a little better than two years ago and uh he's honestly the guy that started it all both for my brother and myself uh, my brother's chris henson y'all can get him at facebook at henson resto customs um we'll try and link that to y'all if y'all want to check him out he does some really cool stuff too we grew up doing this um my earliest childhood memories go back to probably nine years old, 39 Chevy. It's like a babysitter. Probably put us on body work back in the car when he worked under the hood. It was kind of cool. His friends called him Chop, and this little project we're taking on is, is uh, well, it's his. Uh, it's one of the last ones he did, and it's been sitting for a little while now, but uh, it needs some help. Needs to get running again, get on the road again. And this is some of the rad custom stuff he did. His friends called him Chop. You'll see, once you see the car, you'll see why they called him Chop. We called him Pop. And uh, he was a good dude, taught us a lot. And uh, we've run with it to the point of making a living at it. Um, and absolutely enjoyed doing it. He always gave us that. So a lot of fun. And we're passing that on to our boys. And, it's one way to keep this thing going and it starts making you think about time being way more valuable than money you know we all start out in life money you got to have it you got to get a job you got to have food clothing shelter all this stuff and then you find it maybe you get a hobby fishing boat camper wall climbing whatever you dig you end up doing it's your little bit of entertainment it's your reward ours is custom car building whether it be our own or or someone and uh, it's just absolutely a lot of fun. And whether anyone likes it or not, it's just the, the neat thing about changing something, modifying something, modernizing something. That's why so many, uh, so many people out there do it or like it or enjoy it. Everybody has their own version. It's one of the things that makes this country so great. When you get older, you realize time's way more valuable than that money getting stuff. When I work with Levi, I get to spend time with him. When I work with my brother, I get to spend time with him. When I think about my dad being gone, I don't get to spend time with him. So we came up with this thing to where we can work on one of his old rides, get it back on the road, invite you guys to follow along, watch it. And one of the things I really want to try and do with this is he had an original drawing, still looking for it. Uh, if we get that, we'll show it. Um, he had an original drawing of the car, but I know how he wanted it done. A lot of the parts came from the shop back in the old days. Um, so I'm familiar with the build. I know what's in it. I know how he wanted it to be. I know some of the things he didn't like about it, and we'll try and delete some of that. But I really want to come as close as I can to making it what he hoped it would be. And there's this one little particular show, if we can get it to, you know, maybe that'll be, maybe that'll be the cream on the top there for him. Um, just to honor him. He's a great dude. He gave us a lot. And uh, he used to always teach us, you know, a good man take care of himself, a great man take care of himself and others. That's what we strive to be. So I hope you guys subscribe. 
like, share. And uh, this project's gonna be real special. And we're gonna we're gonna get it out here and make a laundry list. To see what we're up against. Uh, I'm gonna show you all everything right down front and the back and what he did and didn't do and how we're gonna deal with it. And then we'll get into it and and uh, maybe we can make his dream come true even though he's not with us no more. And uh, just to see it through our eyes. It'll be kind of cool. Anyway, enough of that melancholy stuff. Back to work.